Ahoy everyone and welcome to another speed art video. This video is a little different because not only am I going to show you guys how to make the design, but also how I animated it in After Effects. I wanted to do a design that was based around the vision inside of a mech suit and this is what I came up with, so I hope you guys enjoy. We start in Adobe Illustrator with a canvas size of 1920 by 1080 pixels for a full 1080p resolution and a solid black background. Next, I add in a good sized green rectangle to fit on the left side of the screen with another green shape to go next to it. Next, I'm adding in three black shapes to give the illusion of holes in the green panel. Then I'm combining the two green shapes into one layer and making a copy by holding Alt and Shift and dragging it to the left. After that, I switch the layer from a solid to a stroke and change the color to white. This next part I'm ashamed to say took way longer than it should have, but I eventually got it to work and got the shape I was after. Next, I'm going to repeat the process a couple times, adding in some random shapes and changing colors to match the design and give it a tech feel. Now that I've finished with the lines, you'll see me start to add in a couple pre-made pieces to the design. Most of it is just text and a couple patterns that I made beforehand to cut down on the length of recording. Now I'm moving on to the next shape, which is basically just me starting with one shape, adding a couple other shapes to it, and using the Shape Builder tool to cut out the parts that I didn't want. Once the shape was created, I wanted to get it even in the corner, so what I did was I made a new shape the size of the canvas and offset its path by a negative 10 pixels and use the shape builder to cut the smaller shape from the bigger shape to get an even guide and then deleted the guide layer when I was done. The next shape is basically the same as the first except it involves a few more shapes. Next, I'm adding in one of the pre-made patterns to the background and locking it so that I don't accidentally click it and move it later. Then I'm moving on to the blue block shapes. I'm basically just putting rectangle shapes on top of one another randomly and merging them into one shape and moving them around the canvas to places I think would look good. These next shapes were super easy to make but make the picture stand out more. Basically, I made a small square with no fill and a white stroke and added circles with no stroke and a white fill to the corners. Then I expanded the square to make it into a solid shape and offset the circles past by two pixels and used the shape builder to delete the expanded area from the white square. The next shape is basically the same thing. It's just a square turned sideways into a diamond shape with a couple lines evenly spaced in the center. And again, I use the Shape Builder tool to delete the lines from the square and place it where I want it. This is the part where I start adding in the pre-made stuff that I mentioned earlier. A couple numbers and some random computer text to make it look more like a HUD inside of a tech helmet. Black text on top of black lines probably wasn't a good idea, so I decided to change the line to the blue color so that the black text would show. Next, I add in pre-made text for the starting screen and text at the bottom that I'll use in After Effects to scroll across the bottom of the screen. In case you'd like to use the fonts I'm using, the two I used are called Autoval and United Kingdom. I'll put the names on the screen and link them in the description below for anyone that wants them. Now I'm moving over to After Effects and again using a 1920 by 1080 pixel canvas at 30 frames per second and putting all of my placeholders into the project. Most of the imported text will be replaced by text inside of After Effects as you'll see me do later. Now I'm getting into the animation part of the video. What I'm doing with these squares is I'm animating their position and their rotation so that they dart around the screen a little and come to rest at their original placement. I wanted to give the illusion that they were attracted to one another but repelling one another at the same time. 
once I get the animations to my liking, I'm going to pre-compose the four squares. What that basically does is group them together so that I can animate them all at once later down the line. Next, I'm just covering my placeholder text with text inside of After Effects because it makes it easier to animate down the line. I ended up going back to the square animation and maneuvering it a bit. I wanted the second set to start when the first set finished, but the animation was too long for what I wanted, so I ended up having it start right before the first one ended. The next animation I wanted to do was a subtle animation and have these three dots here animate in and out at the end of each line. What I did was I typed out the dots and created a mask on top of the text. The text can only be seen when the mask is on top of it, so I animated the mask to move from left to right so that the dots would appear from left to right. It took me a few minutes to get this to work properly because I kept clicking on the wrong layer and couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. Once I got it figured out, I just duplicated the layers by pressing Ctrl D and moved the dots to the end of each line. Then I pre-composed the dots for later animation. Next, I'm moving on to the giant scrolling text at the bottom. What I did with this animation is I made a shape layer from the text layer and changed the fill to none and added a 15 pixel green stroke to it. Next, I added a trim pass effect to the shape layer. Once I find the trim pass in this mess of stuff, I set the end to zero, set a keyframe at the beginning and change the start percentage to zero. Then I move to where I want the stroke to be completely on the screen and change the start percentage back to 100%. What this effect will do is, as the animation moves, the stroke will slowly move around the text until it fills up completely. All I'm doing afterwards is making it where the stroke fills the text, waits a few seconds, and then goes backwards off of the text. The next animation that I want this text to do is, I want it to cycle endlessly across the screen. So what I'm doing is pre-composing both layers and making a copy of that pre-composed layer. Next, I click the top text layer and move it to the right by clicking the X axis and typing plus 1920, which is the full width of our project. The next step is I'm gonna make a new null object, which is a blank object that can be animated. I'm going to parent both text layers to this new null object and then animate the null object to move from the center of the screen to the left side of the screen by 1920 pixels and pre-compose both text layers and the null object together. The next part is the timer, which is pretty simple to get to work. It only has a couple steps and you can make it as long as you'd like. I'm going to make sure my text layer with the timer is selected and I'm going to click effect, expression controls, slider controls. The next part is kind of confusing, but I'll try to explain it as best I can. What I'm going to do is I open the timer at the bottom left and find the slider controls effect that we added. Then I'm going to alt click on the little clock next to it and an expression window will open up. Next, you want to click the squiggly lines next to the effect and drag it so the line it creates goes up to the slider controls at the top left. Make sure the words slider controls are highlighted before letting go to make sure you get it right. Next, in the expression window, I'm going to copy and paste the command in the box and then click away from the box. Pressing enter will only add another line to the code. I'll include the command in the description or in a comment below so that you can use it if you need it. Now that I've got that finished, the slider controls that we added will add seconds to the timer depending on our needs. Setting it to 5 will set it to 5 seconds, which is what I use for this video, but you can set it to 5 minutes or an hour if you want it. You want to make sure you start the animation at the amount you want and animate it to go backwards to zero. Now we can see the full animation that we have at this point. Looking good so far. The next animation that I'm gonna make is adding a glitch effect to the text in the middle. I've imported a stock glitch footage that I got a while back and stretched it a bit bigger than the canvas. Next, I'm gonna hide that layer so that it can't be seen. I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. 
And then I'm going to search in the effects and presets section for an effect called displacement map and add it to our adjustment layer. Then I'm going to make sure my displacement map layer is set to my glitch footage. Now I'm going to move the layers that I don't want to be affected by the glitch above the displacement map layer. Next, I'm just changing the speed of the footage to 500% so that it slows down the footage and looks better. The next step is cutting the adjustment layer to pick spots that I want the glitch effect to come in. I move through the animation and find where it glitches the least, and I cut them out and leave the glitch part so that the text is normal for a few frames, glitches, and repeats the process a couple times. The last part of this entire project was the most frustrating out of all of it. I was trying to make the animations loop, and I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong for the longest time. I probably ended up doing it the long way, but I got it to work how I wanted eventually. What I did was, I picked a pre-composed layer with animations, right-clicked and scrolled up to Time, and clicked Enable Time Remapping. I opened up the Time Remapping section and Alt-clicked on the clock next to it, and in the box I typed Loop and selected Loop Out open parentheses, close parentheses. Next, I went to the last keyframe and pressed page up to move back one frame, set a keyframe for that position, and then deleted the last keyframe. This sets the animation to start looping once it reaches the last keyframe instead of just ending like it normally would. The rest of the video is just me doing this to every pre-composed layer that had animation. And after going back and adding some things that I forgot in the original design, here we have the final product. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned a thing or two. Thanks for coming to watch and have a great day.